I'm going to give you an introduction to arrays in this video and when you might use arrays. On the right we have a program in which a random number is generated and the user can try to guess that number. Uh, the user will be given five chances to guess. Right now the program gives you one chance to guess. We can take a look at how this program works. So if I guessed 50, there I guessed wrong, the random number was 39, and here I guess I'll try 40. I was wrong, number 82. So what I'd like to do is modify this program to allow more than one guess. We want to have five guesses in total. So the code is prompting the user to guess a number and then checking if that number was right. And finally we output the hidden number. So what we'd like to do is ask the user five times for a number. We'd like to get five different numbers. So one way we could do this is ask for a second number. So we could say user guess two create that variable and then we could prompt the user a second time. I'm going to copy paste that code and change user guess to I prompt the user a second time and let's see how this works out. So I could guess 50 then I get a second guess at 40 and it tells me I was wrong the guess was 62. Right now we're still checking only guess number one for whether I had guessed correctly so let's copy this code and we'll check to see if our second guess is right. So we'll see if our second guess is right. And we'll try 50 and 40. So 50 is wrong, 40 is wrong, the hidden number was 23. Okay, that's fine. Now if we wanted to continue this, we could get a third, a fourth, and a fifth user guess and just keep on cutting and pasting code but I think what we're going to end up with is just a lot of redundant code. We can already see quite a bit of redundancy here. The only thing that's changed is the user guess, and there's quite a bit of redundancy here, which is, again, the only thing that's changed is user guess. So instead, just adding multiple variables that do the same thing, we'll use an array. So I'm going to get rid of the redundant code, and then I'm going to create an array called user guess. It'll have five elements, one for each guess, and then I'll initialize each element to be zero. All right, so we can get rid of the guess number two and we can get rid of guess number one. And instead of having user guess number one, which we have at these two locations, we're going to replace this with the array, which is just user guess, and more specifically, the first index of that array at location 0. And I'll do that for both. Alright, let's compile. Run the program. If I guess 50, there we go, I guessed wrong, and that number was 82. So now if I was to want to have a second number, I could again copy paste and access the second location at index 1, and I could do the same by copy pasting, checking whether the number was correct by changing to the second location. So this is the same as if we had just created an additional variable like we did before. Let's compile and take a look. So I'll guess 50 and 40 and 50 is wrong, 40 is wrong, the hidden number was 56. Okay, so once again we ended up with duplicate code. What we can do now that we have understood the pattern very well in fact is we can use a for loop. And we'll write a for loop to get five guesses. So we have a four, and I'll use i, which is short for index. We'll go from one, then i will stop when equal to five. We'll have five guesses, one, two, three, four, five. And then we'll increment i. So that'll be our for loop. All right. And if the first location is zero, we'll start with guess number one. Then we just need to put i minus one because if i starts at 1, but we need the value to be 0, we need to subtract by 1. And let's go ahead and compile. I had a compilation error. i was not declared. That's correct, I forgot to declare i. I'll declare i, initialize to 0. All right, so I enter a guess. I'll guess 50, I'll guess 40, 30, 20, and 10. There, I had five guesses, but I only got one wrong. And that's because the check, when we're checking to see whether we're right or wrong, that also needs to be inside of a for loop. 
So I'm just going to copy the same for loop and indent that code within the for loop, then replace 0 with i minus 1. And let's take a look now. I have, I'll guess, 50, 40, 30, 20, and 10. And I was wrong, 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 wrong. The number was 47. And we did all that checking by using the for loop to check each of the five guesses. And we got each of the five guesses by using, again, a for loop and storing the values in an array. And so that's the power of using an array. And this is also a good example when you have code that is almost identical and you find yourself more or less copy pasting the same code over and over it may be a good opportunity to use a for loop and an array along with it thank you